None of it that I've noticed is too far gone, like where I need to cut out any metal. And we're back on that rust game. This is rust round number two, maybe actually round number three. I made a few mistakes on some of the rust spots when I was doing them before, mainly the, the first spots that I went over just because um, I didn't know exactly what I was doing and I kind of learned as I went along. The spot that I'm gonna be working on today, it's this one right on this this door handle that one I knew I was gonna come back because it's tricky there's multiple different cutouts where the handle goes so it can be kind of tricky to get in there and get all the rust out first thing we gotta do is get this handle off there's this little black rubber grommet type thing on the inside of the door take that off and then on the side of the door there's another one right here it's a smaller one that's gonna be a T25, go ahead and take that out. Be careful here, you don't want this to drop down in the door. I'm actually gonna use some needle nose pliers to get in here. Get a good grip on it, there we go. Basically now, we just gotta get under this little seal here and try and push the handle out. There we go. So we've got that out. That's where that T25 screw was. So this is the actual locking mechanism. And then this piece, which is the actual handle, to get the rest of it out, you're gonna pull, pull towards you. So towards the edge of the door. And this is gonna slide. There we go. Get on out of there. We got all that hardware off. Uh, these two pieces were just T20s. If this happens to you, where your whole locking mechanism comes out. Mm -hmm. um, the initial time I did it, I kind of panicked because I was like, oh shoot, how do I hook this back up? I hope something didn't fall down in the door. Now, that is possible and that would be very unfortunate, but let me show you all you have to do to that old guy right there, you can kind of see there's a little ball socket in there. Um, that's just going to go on to this, this little ball piece here that just clips right into there. So there were two main mistakes with the first round of rust removal and repair. The first problem was not going deep enough or being aggressive enough. The second problem was not putting on a sturdy enough top coat. Without further ado, let's get grinding. At this part, there's actually um, two sheets of metal one on top of each other, and thankfully the interior piece of metal is still in pretty good shape, at least on this side. Um, over here we got some nice holes. The next step, we gotta do the rust converter. Now, the stuff I used on the first round, it was decent, but it was pretty thick, so I basically had to use like a paintbrush to paint it on the rust spots, which worked for the exterior spots, but the problem with a lot of the rust spots is that they're where holes are in the van, and so it's both exterior and interior. It's inside the door panels. So I got this stuff, which is pretty highly recommended. It's called Osfo. It's the same, same concept. Um, it takes the rust and converts it into an inner organic compound. Um, but the nice thing about this is it's fairly thin. So I'm gonna put it into this little spray bottle. The other nice thing about this is it'll help clean off 
these nasty rust runs. So we're just gonna go ahead while we're at it. Just get this whole area nice and cleaned up. Well, it's gonna rain. I had to uh, skip a, a step or two without you because last time I was recording it was uh, supposed to rain and then uh, it snowed. What I did since then is uh, mainly I got the fiberglass resin and matting on there. In a perfect world you wouldn't have any of these little divots. Now what these are from is little air bubbles, air pockets in the matting and the resin when I applied it. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mix up some of the fiberglass resin and just basically do a top coat of resin on this. Next step is we got this Bondo body filler. You have the actual compound and then a little tube of hardener. I'm just gonna eyeball roughly how much I need. And then mix her up nice and well. You don't really have to be super precise with it, but you just wanna Kind of push it in there nice and rough to start to get all of the little holes filled in. So you can see, I mean, the application isn't necessarily super pretty. It's not completely smooth, but that's okay. The biggest thing, especially with this first layer, is getting all the small grooves and divots filled. But then over here, this is the side that I have done an initial sanding and you can tell, I mean, it's pretty darn smooth right now. We got pretty decent gradual transitions from the work area to the original paint here. But the last thing we're gonna do to get it really nice and pretty is we're gonna use this glazing and uh, spot putty. So we're just gonna go ahead and do a nice little coat over all of this. What I'm using for this is, um, it's an enamel paint. Uh, it's just Rust-Oleum. Um, I found this semi-gloss semi to be about as close of a match to the factory paint. Finished product looking pretty spiffy. There's a few tiny little imperfections that you can that you can see. Well, I can see. Maybe you can't exactly see it, but I mean, overall, when you back out, whoo! Good thing I'm done. <laughs>